السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I'm continuing with this book of remembrance, Hasan al-Muslim, of the Sheikh Sayyid Sayyid Ibn Ali al-Qahtani, رحمه الله تعالى. We've been taking a variety of du'as and dhikr. However, we've had a long break. And inshallah, this should be the first of our sessions where we restart the course, learning the meanings of these dhikr, these remembrances, and these du'as. So what we're taking today is the dhikr or the du'a number 10 in the book. The title is Dhikr and al Khuruj min al-manzil. What you say when you leave your house. Very important dhikr. What should we say? So the author, he says, he brings forth the narration, Bismillahi tawakkaltu ala Allahi wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi. So this is the dua and the dhikr that we're going to be looking at. A sharh, the explanation. Laftul hadith. Firstly, looking at the wording of the hadith, which is found in the collection of Imam Abi Dawood. And Anas ibn Malik, radiyallahu anhu, the companion Anas ibn Malik, and the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam قال إذا خرج الرجل من بيته فقال that a person when they leave their house they should say Bismillah the first thing you say when you leave your house is Bismillah then توكلت على الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله this is the dua and the hadith continues يقال حين إذن it said to this person when he or she makes this dua حديتا وكفيتا that you have been guided and sufficed وَوَقِيتَ and protected فَتَتَنَحَّى لَهُ الشَّيَاطِينَ so then the devils they depart from this person they flee from this person فَيَقُولَ لَهُ شَيْطَانٌ آخَرٌ and one of the shayateen exclaims one of the devils exclaim كَيْفَ لَكَ بِرَجُلٍ قَدْ هُدِيَ exclaims to his companions from amongst the devils how can it be how will you be successful in misguiding a person كَيْفَ لَكَ بِرَجُلٍ قَدْ خُدِيَ who has been guided by Allah وَكُفِيَ and sufficed by Allah وَوُقِيَ and protected by Allah طيب ثانيا سكني شرح مفردات الحديث looking at the wordings of the hadith which is extremely important as we know the first word بسم الله starting in the name of Allah when we say بسم الله though the action is not mentioned it's مقدور it's estimated so when we say Bismillah in the name of Allah, we're not actually mentioning what we're doing. When you start reading the Quran and you say Bismillah, you're not saying Bismillah, Aqra al Quran. In the name of Allah, I read the Quran. So the action that you're going to do with Bismillah, it's estimated. Okay? But what does Bismillah mean? It means that I start with the barakah of Allah's name. And that is the best thing that one can do when they leave the house. Because they want the protections and the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The earth belongs to who? The earth belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So who better or who more appropriate than to start with his name, Allah Azza wa Jal, when we leave the house because we want his protection and we want his blessings subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next word we say is tawakkaltu ala Allah. Tawakkaltu ala Allah. Which means ay i'tamadtu alayhi wahtahu bil qalb ma tafweed al amr ilayhi wa amiltu bi asbab al mashru'a that I have made my heart rely firmly upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my heart is relying firmly upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I have relegated my affair and my situation to Allah azza wa jal meaning I have given up everything to Allah in the sense that only he can bring forth what I'm desiring only Allah azza wa jal can bring forth protection for me only Allah azza wa jal can bring forth guidance for me only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can bring me that which I'm guiding so through my heart I have complete reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the meaning of tawakkaltu ala Allah. I have tawakkal upon Allah. And wa amiltu bi asbab al And with my reliance of my heart upon Allah, I don't forget to take the means. Meaning I don't forget to do the physical actions that I need to do to achieve what I want to achieve. Because you have some misguided people. They think that if you sit in the masjid and you make dhikr and you make ibadah, which is something beautiful, then Allah would suffice them in terms of the things that they need from this world. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to rely upon Him with our hearts in the sense of knowing that nothing can take place except with Allah's permission, okay? And with Allah's guidance and help. However, He wants us still to make the effort to go out into the world and to seek and to strive and to achieve what we need to achieve. 
so it's not the case that we sit in the masajid and we just worship Allah Azawajal and then expect uh, you know provisions to fall from the sky so I'm going to quote to you a hadith now and I want you to give me one of you to give me the understanding of this hadith as a proof for correct tawakkal the correct understanding of tawakkal the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said in the hadith narrated by Imam Tirmidhi or collected by Imam Tirmidhi لو أنكم تتوكلون على الله حق توكله the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said had you people relied upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the uh, with a correct reliance with a true reliance لرزقكم كما يرزق الطيور تغدد خماصا وتروح بطانا then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have provided for you like he provides for the birds they leave the nest empty stomach in the morning and they return later on in the, in, later on in the day with a full stomach so can somebody tell me how to extrapolate from this hadith the proof or the guidance for the correct understanding of tawakkal the correct understanding of reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what is the correct understanding of reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay no need to answer I'll answer for you inshallah so the hadith is showing us that the birds they go out and they make the effort they leave their nests it's not that they just sit in their nest and they rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather they go out and they seek Allah's provisions so this is how the Prophet ﷺ wants us to be our hearts are firmly connected to Allah Azawajal upon relying upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in knowing that he alone will bring for us the outcome that we desire however we still have to take the means Tayyip uh, can somebody contact the person who's left their microphone on so that that background noise can be stopped please Tayyip thirdly the statement in the hadith wala hawla wala quwwata illa billah a tremendous statement Imam Ibn Rajib al-Hanbali may Allah have mercy upon him this great Imam of Sunnah and Islam he said la tahawla lil 'abd min hal ila hal that there is no there is no moving no ability to move belonging to the slave of Allah from one state to another state that you cannot change your state you cannot even move okay wala quwwa lahu ala dhalik illa billah and you don't have the strength to move or to change your state except with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَالْعَبْدُ مُحْتَاجْ إِلَى الْإِسْتِعَانَةِ بِاللَّهِ so the slave, the worship of Allah knows and understands that they need Allah Azawajal's aid to change their state and to better their state and to move from one situation to another situation فَمَنْ حَقَّقَ الْإِسْتِعَانَ عَلَيْهِ فِي ذَلِكَ كُلَّهُ أَعَانَهُ so whoever solidifies the reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in their affairs then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help them whoever manifests in the correct way their reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then Allah azawajal will help them okay so the more one learns about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the more one knows about Allah's majesty and how he controls everything in the universe and how everything is decreed by the permission of Allah and not a leaf falls from a tree except by the permission of Allah the sun doesn't rise and the rain doesn't fall and the wind doesn't blow and nothing takes place on this earth or in the universe without the permission of Allah Azawajal. when you read about these things and you internalize them then you are able to have more tawakkal upon Allah you're able to rely upon Allah Azawajal with your heart because you know that to Allah alone belongs the command and to Allah alone belongs the control of every atom in the universe so you never have fear because you're relying upon the one that controls everything and you have full confidence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qawluhu idha kharaja min baytihi that the person says this dua when they leave their house they say the dua bismillahi tawakkaltu ala allahi wa la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah they say this dua when they leave their house you call and it's said to the person when they leave the house saying this dua it is said so this wording it is said the ulama they say يجوز أن يكون القائل هو الله ويجوز أن يكون ملك من الملائكة it's possible that it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is exclaiming the following phrase or it's one of the angels that is exclaiming so it's said kufita you have been sufficed أي من كل مكروه وسوء that you have been sufficed from every, everything which you dislike or everything which is evil for you why? why you sufficed? because you relied upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you sought his protection وَوَقِيتَ and you have been protected أي من شر شياطين الإنسية والجنية so you are protected from the evil of the devils from amongst the jinn and the devils amongst mankind 
قال ابن علان رحم الله ابن علان he says ووقيت أي حفظت من شر كل عدو ابن علان this great scholar he says that you have been protected from the evil of every enemy بواسطة صدقك في تفويض جميع الأمر لبارئه by the fact that you have relied upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and relegated your affairs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything uh, that's why Allah azawajal suffices you and protects you and also the word hudita meaning you have been guided ay ila tariq al muwassala ila mahabbatillah you have been guided due to reliance upon Allah azawajal and seeking his protection to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the one who truly relies upon Allah azawajal remembers him subhanahu wa ta'ala seeks his aid and protection then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide that person to the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thalithan thirdly thirdly in the discussion ma yustafadu min al-hadith what is it that we benefit from the hadith awwalan bayan anna min asma'i Allah al-wakil that firstly from the uh, the names we learn that from the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the word al-wakil ومعناه الحافظ and the meaning of الوكيل is the one who preserves and protects الذي توكل بالقيام بأمر الخلق جميعا الذي توكل بالقيام بأمر الخلق جميعا so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who preserves and protects all of his creation the name وكيل okay, has that meaning that Allah is the one who is protecting and taking care of the affairs of every single living being in his creation so Learning the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it be this one, Al-Wakil, or it be any other name, this helps you with growing your Iman. Because when you reflect and ponder upon the names and the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it's from the greatest areas of knowledge to learn the names and the attributes of Allah azawajal, you are coming closer and closer to Allah azawajal. It's increasing you in Iman, and it's enabling you to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a good way. The more you learn Allah's names and attributes, the better you would connect to Allah Azawajal and use those names in acts of worship. Secondly, how we benefit from this hadith or what we benefit. That having tawakkul upon Allah Azawajal doesn't negate the fact that we should take the means that have been legislated for us or permitted for us to take. Because you find that even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best of creation, the most closest of creation to Allah Azawajal, what would he do Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? He would, he would exhaust all means in terms of trying to achieve his objective. Yet he was the most complete in relying upon Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He knew from the depths of his heart and his soul that he could not achieve anything except by the permission of Allah. But that only caused him to exert his energy as much as, po- as much as possible whilst knowing from the beginning to the end that it is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can bring about for you the thing that you are trying to achieve or protect you from that which you are trying to be protected from. So some people when they talk about tawakkul, reliance upon Allah, they say that you do the acts, you do the physical actions in terms of trying to achieve what you want to achieve and then you leave the affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of its outcome. This is correct. You do whatever you can in terms of trying to achieve, okay, to the best of your ability, and then you leave the affair to Allah. But it's not just that. Rather, from the moment you start preparing your actions and thinking about your actions and planning and taking the first step, even from then you have to walk upon Allah because you know that anything that I am doing it's only if Allah gives me permission and success that this action is going to bring about success. And it's going to be blessed when you have this tawakkul, this reliance upon Allah. So even from the first step that you take, you should have tawakkul upon Allah So it's from the beginning to the end. The fourth thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we learn takes care of the slaves and the worshippers and protects them those who relegate their affairs to Allah Azawajal. So as we said time and time again, relegating the affair to Allah Azawajal means that you know from the depths of your heart and your soul that it is only Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that can provide for us that which we are looking for. And it is only Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that can save us from that which we are trying to be saved from. And Allah Azawajal alone is in control of the universe, not the boss that we are afraid of at work, not the whoever it may be that we are fearful. No, they're not in control. Allah is in control. So we relegate and we trust 
upon Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran in a rhetorical question in Surah Al-Zumr, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدَهُ Is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not the one who is sufficient for his slave? Of course Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the answer is of course, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for his slaves. So when we're in a situation when we are facing difficulty or stress, and we start to doubt, you know, the whisperings, they come because the situation is difficult. And am I really going to be successful in this situation? Is Allah really going to help me? And shaitan starts to whisper, you remind yourselves of such verses, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ عَبْدَهُ Allah is telling us and reminding us, is it not the case and the reality and the truth of all truths that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that is sufficient for his slave? So we say to our soul, stop lying to me, stop whispering to me, I'm not going to believe you, I'm going to believe the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal. Fifthly, a shaitan la yaqwa ala irwa'i abd ista'asama billahi wal taja ilayhi. That shaitan and the shayateen, the devils, they cannot overpower the slave and misguide the slave, the one who has connected themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ones that have relied upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance and sought refuge in him. Inna kayda shaytani kana ta'ifa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Nisa, certainly and for sure that the plottings of the devil is weak. How is the plotting of the devil weak for this person? Because this person is always running to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, always wants to be in the company of Allah azza wa jal, always wants to be in the protection and the remembrance and the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And who better is there? Which place better? Which state of mind and soul and being is there better than to be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of beneficial experiences, beneficial energy? Okay, all of this through ref reflection and worship and dua. And after that, the next point, the sixth point, التوكل على الله هو أجمع أنواع العبادة وأعلى مقامات التوحيد. Having tawakkul upon Allah subhanahu wa taala is the most comprehensive, or from the most comprehensive forms of worship to Allah azza wa jal, and it's from the highest levels of tawheed, the highest levels of tawheed which everybody needs to learn and implement. فمن صح توكله وإخلاصه ومتابعته لرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كفاه الله كل الحموم. And whoever perfects and corrects their tawakkul and their sincerity and their following of the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would suffice that person from every difficulty and every harm and every woe and every sorrow. وَكُلُّ شَرْ and every evil بِقَوْلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Whoever has reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as described then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sufficient for that person. Know for sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of your affairs and make your affairs correct and better our situations for us. All, lots of, all that is upon us is for us to correct our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next dua that we will take today inshallah is the dua with also referring to leaving the house. Where the Prophet ﷺ would say, "Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an adilla aw udalla aw azilla aw uzalla aw adlima aw adlima aw udlima aw ajhala aw yujhala alayya." The Prophet ﷺ would say these amazing words. Sharh al-Hadith. Awwalan lafz al-Hadith. Where does the Hadith come from? Okay, the Hadith again is narrated by Imam Abi Dawood in his collection of Hadith in his Sunan. And Ummi Salama, the wife of the Prophet وسلم, the mother of the believers, she narrates, قالت ما خرج النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم من بيتي قط إلا رفع طرفه إلى السماء. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم never left my house, okay, ever, except that upon leaving he would raise his eyes to the heavens, his sight to the heavens, and he would say, excuse me, he would say. اللهم إني أعوذ بك أن أضل أو أضل أو أزل أو أزل أو أظلم أو أظلم أو أجهل أو يجهل يجهل علي. He would say these words that we're going to look at now. The first of these words, اللهم إني أعوذ بك. Okay, شرح مفردات الحديث. Explaining the vocabulary of the hadith or the dua. اللهم إني أعوذ بك. Oh Allah, I call upon you with all your names, your beautiful names, and I'm saying to you, Ya Allah, with these beautiful names. I am seeking refuge in you. I seek refuge in you because you are the one that controls. So Allahumma inni a'udhu bika. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from all evil and all harm and all misguidance Okay, that there is in the universe. Because you alone control everything, you alone own everything. And as we said, 
nothing can move and nothing can take place without your permission. So it only makes sense to seek refuge in Allah Azza wa Jal and never think about seeking refuge in other than Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. The next word, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika, after that, adillu, a'udhu bika and adil. Oh Allah, I seek refuge in you that I adil an tariq al hidayah wa an salikh anhu. That I am due to my own misbehavior, due to my own evil, that I am misguided in any way, shape, or form from the, from the path of guidance. Okay? So you're saying, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an adil. Oh Allah, I'm seeking refuge in you from the evil within myself that it misguides me. Because we need guidance in every moment, time and place. Because what tends to happen is that we become negligent at times and sometimes we feel that we have enough Iman, we have enough faith, we don't need to rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And more than often it's at that point when we start to become negligent and you know thinking that okay we've done enough, we've done enough acts of worship, we don't need to really beseech Allah جل, for guidance anymore because my iman is quite high. It's at that point that shaitan he starts to attack us and he takes advantage of the fact that we are now turning away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some of the salaf, I believe it was Imam Ahmad, rahimullah, he said, I do not see except I do not see the situation of the slave except that he or she is like a person in an ocean holding on to a plank of wood. And that plank of wood is your connection to Allah جل, meaning that you are so in need of that to save you from drowning and the minute you let go of that you're likely to drown so that is the likeness that this righteous person they they made for us so you seek refuge Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an adil I seek refuge in you Allah from the evil of myself that I am misguided aw udal ay bi tazyin al qabih wa tajmil al munkar min al qurana isu aw udal so the first one adil it means my own misguidance from within. This one, aw udal, means that I am misguided from those outside of me, okay? From companions around me, from the people that I mix with. I, I, ask, you, I ask you to protect me from any evil that they may have, okay? Because it's well known that a person is easily misguided depending upon what kind of companionship they have, what kind of friends they have. And, and this is something which is well understood. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith in Tirmidhi, الْمَرْءُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِهِ فَلْيَنْظُرْ أَحَدُكُمْ مَنْ يُخَالِلْ That a person is upon the religion of their friend. So be extremely careful to one who you take as your friend. Because one good friend is better for you than a hundred bad friends. One good friend that guides you to goodness, that guides you to benefit in this world and the hereafter, is better for you. So, you do, so you're asking Allah جل, to save you from the harm and the misguidance of people that may be around you in society. And then the hadith goes on and says, أو أزل, okay, أو أزل, بمعنى أنزلق إلى معصيتي من غير قصد وعمد, that I slip up and I fall into sin without intending to do so. So many times in life when you're not paying attention, you're not guarding yourself, you can slip up and you can end up in a bad spot. So أو أزل means that Allah protect me from slipping up and falling into uh, misguidance. أو أزل, and the next word, أو أزل. أن يوقعني غيري في الزلل بسبب غفلة أو شحوة محرمة. That another person, okay, misguides me due to the fact that I was negligent and unaware. أو أظلم. أو أظلم. The next word قال العين أي أظلم غيري بأي أنواع الظلم. That oh Allah, I seek refuge in you, and this is very important. That I seek refuge in you, oh Allah, that I do not be somebody who misguides others or oppresses others. I do not be somebody who oppresses others. Because there's much, um, there's much oppression in society. There's much oppression in society and at times without even realizing it, we get carried away with that wave also. We start to oppress people by backbiting them, maybe taking their rights, maybe not being nice to them as we should have been nice or maybe more uh, major oppression than that. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith collected by Imam Ahmad, اتقوا دعوة المظلوم فإنها ليس بينها وبين الله جاب. Be extremely wary of the Dua of the oppressed person because verily there is not between this dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any barrier because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that he will give victory to the one that is oppressed in this world and the hereafter so the person who oppresses another should be extremely wary of that so when the when the dua in the dua we say aw adlim okay that I don't want to oppress others aw adlim so the first word aw adlim I don't want to oppress others the second word, أو أظلم, or and I want to seek refuge also 
from being oppressed myself. Okay, so a complete dua. I seek refuge in uh, the oppression of others, and I seek refuge in you, Allah, from me myself oppressing others. طيب أو أجهل. The next word أو أجهل. Meaning, أي أكون جاهلا بحق الله علي من توحيدي والاستقامة على شرعه وكذا حقوق الخلق. Meaning that oh Allah subhanahu wa taala, I'm seeking أو أجهل. This word أو أجهل. I'm I'm seeking protection in you, Allah. That I do not be in a state of ignorance, ignorance pertaining to your rights, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and also pertaining to the rights of your creation. That I am aware of what I am supposed to be doing pertaining to you, and I'm aware of how my relationship is supposed to be towards the creation. The next word, Al Yujhal Aliya. Okay? Ay min qibli sufaha wa ahli jadal wal bil batil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect me from the ignorance of other people, keep me safe from the misguidance and the negativity. That is surrounded in by uh, surround that we are surrounded with in society. Okay, when people come to us and they ridicule us uh, for no reason, for example, uh, for being Muslims, or they want to debate with us for no reason. Okay, and they say silly things to us. So we want Allah's protection from that. We don't want our energy to be negative. We don't want uh, that kind of um, interaction with people. But if it does come to us. If it does come to the situation that people start pointing their fingers at us and saying to us that you people are really weird for practicing this religion, we have no problem with that. Why? Because the hadith in Sahih Muslim from Abi Hurair radiallahu anhu where the Prophet sallallahu said, "Bada al-Islam gharib." That Islam began as something strange. وَسَيَأُودُ كَمَا بَدَأَ غَرِيبًا فَتُوبَ لِلْغُرَبَاءِ That Islam became, began as something strange amongst society and it will return to be something strange as it began in society so give glad tidings of paradise to those who are strangers meaning us the practicing Muslims we are strange in midst of all the misguidance that is taking place in society so we never shy away from being Muslims and you know talking about our faith because we know that being a stranger with practicing Islam means that we're going to get a huge reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Prophet وسلم, when he would say this dua he would as we said raise his Hand, he raises his head to the heavens. What is the dua? Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an adilla aw udal aw azilla aw uzal aw adlama aw uzlama aw ajhala aw yujhala alayya. This dua that we just explained, the Prophet ﷺ, he would say this upon leaving the house and he would raise his eyes to the heavens. He would raise his sight to the heavens. The great scholar Al Hafid ibn Hajr al Asqalani, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said that narrating from another great scholar, Ibn Daqiq al Eid, fi sharh al Imam. رفع الطرف إلى السماء لتوجهه إلى قبلة الدعاء. That the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم would raise his sight to the heavens because it's as though he was looking to the qibla. You know we have a qibla on the earth which is in Mecca, right? The Kaaba. And also um, spiritually, not physically, but spiritually, the qibla of our du'as and our worship is in the heavens, right? So the Prophet ﷺ would look to the heavens when making du'a because that is the, the qibla of the du'a. That is where the du'as ascend to. And that is where the angels, they do uh, whatever they do and they take their orders and commands. مَا يُسْتَفَادُ مِنَ hadith. Thirdly, what do we benefit from the hadith? Firstly, الْمُسْلِمَ الصَّادِقِ يَعْلَمَ إِلْمَ الْيَقِينَ أَنَّهُ لَا غِنَ لَهُ عَنِ اللَّهِ طَرْفَ الْتَعِينَ That the believer, the true believer, understands with full certainty that they cannot be sufficient from Allah's help and guidance even for the blink of an eye meaning that they understand that they always need Allah's protection and guidance so they don't ever leave alone begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as much as they can and also what we benefit from what we've taken that the Prophet would be continual in making this dua continual the Prophet رغم اسمته منها and that, is in, and that is keeping in mind that the Prophet ﷺ was protected by Allah from all types of misguidedness and all types of harm. Okay, So why is this? Why is the reason that the Prophet ﷺ would be continual in making such a dua even though he knew that he was protected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Would anybody like to answer this question? Why would, Allah, why would the Prophet ﷺ be continual in making such type of dua even though he knew that Allah had promised to protect him and to guide him. Could be an example for us? Perfect, very good. So one of the main reasons is that the Prophet 
is the best of teachers and the best examples for uh, uh, in terms of guidance so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not like us me and you that when we tell people to do good we ourselves probably don't do it many a time but the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be the first and the best of people in doing the good action as and before telling other people to do it so the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the best of teachers and the best of examples and also al murad minhu at the one wa thabat ala ma huwa alayhi min al asma is that he wants to continue having this protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is the way of the Salaf many of the Sahaba the companions of the Prophet وسلم, even though they were told through revelation that they were going to enter into paradise did it this didn't stop them in any way shape or form from seeking Allah's protection and seeking nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather it caused them to be even more desirous of Allah's pleasure and his protection even though they had the promise of Jannah because that was the nature of Iman with them the nature of faith that they that in no way shape or form do they want to lose this like us we don't want to lose this bonus that we've just received from work we don't want to lose this opportunity to make money right we're so eager and we're careful and we're planning and trying all the time they were like that with their faith they wouldn't want to lose out anything from the matters connected to pleasing Allah and the hereafter طيب, we're going to stop there inshallah and I hope uh, what I mentioned was a little bit uh, beneficial inshallah anything which was beneficial from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the mistakes and shortcomings were from myself and shaitan uh, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam